Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Fell Lord Zakoon. Yes, so this encounter hasn't changed a whole lot since PTR, so if you have seen that video, you'll probably know enough information to sort of just get by when you do actually hit this boss. However, there is a couple of strats that sort of have developed since the PTR that do make this encounter a lot easier because he is pretty deadly. But before we go into anything, for this encounter you want to bring two tanks, you want to bring roughly one healer per group, and pretty much any DPS composition you like. However, you don't want to have too many melee because it kind of makes things a little bit awkward. Now at the very start of the encounter, you want to pull the boss towards the entrance of the room and have your range spread out behind him. And this is to kind of help you place one of the key mechanics in this fight, which is crystal pillars. Now these pillars spawn over the course of the encounter and they take a long time to despawn. These pillars themselves don't really do that much at all. They do some pulsing AoE damage to anyone who has stood near them, but that's about it. However, if these pillars are hit by waves that come from various different abilities, they will do a massive burst of unavoidable damage to everyone in the entire room. So what you need to do is position players in the room in certain areas to soak these waves with their bodies to prevent the crystals from being hit. When you soak a wave, you'll take a noticeable damage hit, as well as deal some splash damage to anyone within three yards. So if you can avoid like soaking on top of other players, that would be a good idea. Now, before we talk about how the waves spawn in detail, and um, we'll talk about that in a second, the main thing that you need to know is how the crystals spawn. Now, fissures will appear in random places around the room, and after so long, crystal pillars will spawn out of them. Now, if you have a player stand in these fissures, the pillars won't spawn. However, one of the crystals per set of fissures will always spawn regardless. With this in mind, you want players to stand in all of the fissures apart from one and leave that particular one to spawn a pillar. You want your first pillar to be as close to the boss as possible. And after that point, just choose whatever pillar is closest to the previous pillar. This way, it is a lot easier to block a bunch of waves going towards the pillars because, you know, if they're all in one place, you'd have to be soaking all four corners of the room. You could just be like soaking one little area. However, not everyone can soak the waves. Players that go and stand inside these fissures and prevent the pillars from spawning will get a debuff called Latent Energy that lasts for two minutes. While you have this debuff, if you're hit by any of the waves, you'll explode just like a crystal pillar does. So you need to make sure that you do not get hit, otherwise you will definitely wipe your entire raid. Note that this massive damage is also procced if you attempt to soak the fissures again while you have the debuff. So you can only soak the fissures when you don't have the debuff. Now, primarily, you'll only want your ranged and healers to soak these fissures so that only they will get latent energy. And you'll understand when we talk about phase two. But to start off, let's talk about phase one and let's talk about how some of these waves spawn. Now, something that your tanks will need to deal with is something called Soul Cleave. He will do a large amount of shadow damage to you and places a debuff that increases the amount of shadow damage you take by 50% for a minute and a half. You will also become disembodied and this will push you into the shadow realm for 15 seconds. Inside here, you'll need to move from small waves as well as jump over a few Nova waves. If you get hit, you'll do a large amount of damage to everyone outside, so don't get hit. Do your best to tap dance around everything. Now, you'll leave the room as soon as your debuff expires, and when you do leave, you'll send out waves from wherever you came out of. So make sure that you leave as far away from the pillars as possible. Your raid may need to soak some of the waves that you spawn um, to prevent them from hitting either latent energy players or the pillars. So just keep that in mind. Maybe let them know, Oi, I'm coming out here. Make sure you're ready to soak. And with this debuff, you just need to make sure you taunt on one. So basically the tanks need to take turns at getting hit by the soul cleave. Another ability the boss does is something called cavitation. When the boss casts this, he'll send out a bunch of purple waves to just random enemies. Um, it's very, very important, of course, that latent energy targets don't get hit. If you have the boss face towards the pillars, they will never get hit by this ability anyway, providing like no one else is there apart from just your tanks. But ultimately, melee, as soon as this ability comes in, just make sure you move to the sides of the boss. If this hits you, you're going to die immediately. And the last ability the boss does in this phase is something called Befoul. This just applies a few small healing absorb shields to a few targets. And how it works is that once they've received enough healing, the debuff will be removed and they'll just explode dealing damage to anyone within six yards. So it's important that people with Befoul, they move out, they get healed up, and then they move back towards the raid again. Now, after about 90 seconds, the boss will transition into phase two. He will throw his axe to the ground and it will start dealing ticking damage to the entire raid for 30 seconds. While the boss is disarmed, he'll now be hitting the tanks much harder than he did before. On top of this, all of his attacks will now attempt to cleave onto another target near the tank. And if no one is near enough, the tank will be hit twice. As tanks, make sure you stack on each other, like Butcher or even Patchwork. Just stand on top of each other, and now is a really good time to use your big personal cooldowns, because most of the other damage throughout Phase 1 isn't much of a big deal. 
Now the main ability that will probably wipe you in this phase is something called Seeds of Destruction. Now the boss will debuff random targets and when this debuff expires 5 seconds later, all affected players will shoot out waves in all directions around them. Now with all these waves going out, it's very likely that someone with latent energy or one of the crystals will be hit and of course, that will wipe you. So you need to have some sort of strategy in place in order to deal with them. Now the way that we did it, which we would say is probably the best way of doing it, is to have your entire ray team, apart from the melee and the tanks, stacked dead center in the middle of the room on top of a healing rain or an efflorescence. We have players with latent energy right in the dead center of the circle, and then people without latent energy to be spread loosely around the edge of the healing rain. When the seeds come in, all affected players just run to the back and the sides of the room, while the rest of the raid just stands still, blocking all the waves to all the latent energy players that are inside the healing rain. Remember though that when you do soak a wave, it does deal splash damage, so it is important that you're spread slightly, but not too much, because if any wave makes it past like this player barrier and goes into the middle of the healing rain where all the stacked latent energy targets are, they'll blow up and you'll just wipe immediately. So as the waves come towards the barrier, it's probably a good idea to use like damage reduction as well as healing cooldowns because there's quite a lot of AoE damage coming out from his axe as well as these waves as well. It can be a little bit nasty. And also that any waves that aren't blocked passively by this player barrier and actually move towards the boss and the crystals, which won't be too many, you need your melee to deal with these. So they need to run out and block any that could potentially hit the crystals. Now you have two sets of seeds in total and it is possible that someone with latent energy will be targeted by the Seeds of Destruction at the exact same time. You just need to make sure that you don't get hit by anyone else's waves because your own waves just never hit you. They don't work that way. Even if you run on top of them, they just don't activate. But other seed waves from other players, they will hit you. Now this particular strat really is very, very strong if you have a large raid size. We haven't actually tried this with a smaller raid size, but there could potentially be issues because you might not necessarily have enough players to soak all the waves from all of the seeds. It would be a little bit difficult. So in a smaller raid size, we would just recommend that you just have your players that have the latent energy debuff just to be completely independent and dodge waves. And that is what we actually did on our very first heroic kill. We just had all 30 people do whatever the fuck they wanted to. Yeah, it was a bit, it was it much was, harder. It, yeah, <laughs> it was a lot harder. It's very, very sketchy. It makes healing difficult. I mean, there's so many cons to it, but if you do it correctly and you don't fuck up a no one who has latent energy does actually get hit by the waves or the crystals or they get hit by the waves, you'll be absolutely fine. So. Yeah. Providing you do that, you'll be good. Now, when the boss hits 30% health, he will kind of go into phase three. Regardless of whatever phase he's in, he'll just go straight into his last phase. Now, in this phase, he'll be using all of the abilities from both phase one and phase two at the exact same time. And all ability timers reset. So say you've just got one set of rumbling fissures and then you transition him at 30%. He'll then spawn another set and it fucking sucks. So try not to do that particular overlap. Now for this phase, you want to use the exact same strat as in phase two. The only difference is, is that players will need to leave the healing rain area to either soak fissures or when they have the Bethal debuff. Now when the cavitation comes in, you need the entire healing rain camp to spread and make sure they avoid any of the waves. Do note that you will not get the seeds of destruction and the cavitation at the same time. So you can spread for the cavitation and then stack up back again in that healing rain formation to deal with the seeds. Now, all healing cooldowns in this phase, just like in phase two, should be used for when the seeds of destruction explodes. However, do feel free to use reactionary healing cooldowns, such as maybe something like revival. If something goes horribly wrong, like a couple of people explode or something, just make sure everyone is topped up and hopefully the boss will just die before you all do. Yeah, it's incredibly messy this last phase, but if you keep that stacked group in the middle and you, you know, you set up your healers in such a way so they've got like almost priority targets, they're healing the right people at the right time, it's not too difficult you just got to react very quickly when the cavitation comes in just so you quickly move out and then stack back in again but ultimately if no one gets hit by any of the waves or they have latent energy and if the crystals don't get hit this last phase isn't a big deal but thank you very much for watching guys if this guy did help you out then make sure you leave us a like it will help us out a lot and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching